Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Urban Legends video. One more video here for this particular series, and then I'll probably just do one last one uh, for this round, and then I'll wait a couple of weeks before doing some more, based on your suggestions. This one I've never heard of before, but I picked it because it reminded me of another Urban Legend, that involving the Donner Party, and what had happened with them, and the supposed rumors suggesting what the party eventually had to do to survive and with this particular urban legend it's actually tied to a painting that is a fictional depiction of what happened to the party I'm going to talk about and you'll see a picture of the painting here the painting is one that's called it has a unique title it's called man proposes God disposes and it was created in 1864 by a painter of the name Edwin Landseer and it's pretty gruesome. I mean you'll see instantly some striking images of the painting two polar polar bears that are essentially chewing on the remains of a failed expedition of some sort. I mean you can clearly see that long protruding pole that usually goes on top of a boat, uh, perhaps to carry its sail. You see the rib bones that distinctly look like the rib bones of a human rather than any other kind of animal. And then the two polar bears tearing apart, one in that case tearing apart either the flag or the sail that's tied to that long wooden stick, and then the other one feasting on the actual bones itself. And the reason why this painting was done was because it is a fictional depiction, at least fictional in the sense that this is the imagined uh, depiction of what occurred to what's called Franklin's Lost Expedition. This was, and I'll give a good history of this in a little bit, but Franklin's Lost Expedition was an Arctic exploration done by a gentleman, a captain, by the name of Sir John Franklin back in 1845. But this expedition, uh, it was uh, the, him and a crew consisting over 100 people was lost and so cut to a couple of years later again 1864 about maybe 20 I'm sorry uh, about yeah almost 20 years later um, you have this painter Edwin Landseer who had uh, created this just again as a imagining of what had occurred to the expedition because by that point um, nobody knew pretty much exactly what was going on, why the crew was lost, what had happened to them. Um, little by little over the years and over the decades more and more evidence was gathered as to what occurred and I'll talk about that here in a moment. First let, let me talk about the urban legend. Um, it's tied to this painting because because of the graphic description, uh, the graphic images associated with this painting, there's an urban legend that some student back in the 1970s had a very ill circumstance occur to him after staring at this painting. And here's how it goes. The urban legend says that right now, uh, by the way, this painting is held at the Royal Holloway, uh, which is the University of London. So it's in some room or in some hallway there in the university, and it's hanging along with other works. And the urban legend goes that sometime in the 1970s, when it was still hanging there, um, there was a student who was taking some exams or taking some kind of semester-end courses, just something where his area... Uh, forced him to be in the school for long periods of time and the urban legend continues that part of this uh, area was the same area where this picture was hanging uh, the man that proposes God disposes painting and so by him being in that area for such a long period of time he eventually um, kept seeing this painting over and over and over and supposedly the urban legend goes that with this experience and with the graphic images and with the painting perhaps subtly uh, influencing him in certain ways he eventually went mad and then committed suicide and so the real life circumstances afterward are this every single year there in that University of London when it's time for exams a union flag is actually draped over this painting because the school either by the actual circumstance of the student committing suicide or from the urban legend tied to that circumstance the school does not want anything else happening like that again 
And so they drape this canvas, which is a pretty large canvas. They drape it completely over with a union flag. That way, when it comes to that time of the year where, again, students are hanging around that place for long periods of times, probably studying, collecting materials, doing research, whatever, when it comes to their exams, they are not influenced by this painting in that same negative manner that that student was. What's interesting to note though about this urban legend is uh, it, to this day it's still uh, it's a college tradition you call it of covering the painting but when it comes to that circumstance that happened in the 70s with that student people has, have actually asked the university and they've asked people that work and the university specifically in that Royal Holloway and they say no there's no circumstance no incidents that ever occurred such as that somehow a story originated uh, from the painting probably somebody posted it somewhere in some newspaper some newsletter anywhere around that time in the 70s and then others started posting it and then it took on a life of its own so it goes to show that this could be just 100 percent false when it comes to that um, incidents that occurred with that student and the rumor associated with his suicide but the actual college tradition of covering the painting is 100 percent real that still continues apparently to this day and anything involving that painting it still hangs there in that royal holloway um, if anyone has gone by or lives near that area again that's the royal holloway in the university of london and if anyone has um, any experiences tied to that painting, it'd be interesting to see. Uh, you know, uh, please share your comments, post them below. It'd be fascinating to see if anyone has any tales to it. Now, again, the painting is based on an actual reimagining of an occurrence, and this was Franklin's Lost Expedition. I promised I was going to talk about this briefly. Uh, what this was, was back in England in 1845, there was an air, a captain by the name there of Sir John Franklin, who you'll see a picture of here, and he was um, taking a crew of about 128 men on an expedition and this would explore the upper areas of the Arctic in and around that area um, presumably and you'll see a picture of here showcasing where he started off and then the areas that he would explore which would include in and around Victoria Island potentially or Baffin Island and then also if he um, extended his trip farther enough going towards Greenland itself but what had happened was a series of tragic circumstances. Um, ar around that time that he departed, um, once the crew went missing, then it was the gentleman's wife, Franklin's wife, who went by the name of Lady Franklin. She essentially tried to find out what happened to her husband, what happened to the crew, because when they never reported back, it became a frantic search to see what had occurred to the point that there were multiple rewards offered to the discovery of the crew or at least the discovery of the remains of the crew because as time went by uh, more and more hope was slipping away in terms of finding anybody that was still alive or anything involving the actual expedition itself and based on evidence gathered by the Intuits which were the indigenous people in and around the Greenland area specifically and based on evidence found from notes from some of the crew members from that that expedition uh, people have been able to piece together a uh, timeline of what had occurred to this day though the catalyst like the main reason as to what caused the downfall of the expedition is still kind of a mystery instead it's think of it like it's pop marked with various various uh, reasons all coming into one conclusion so it wasn't just one item that led to the downfall expedition but rather a multitude of items that did so and those uh, predominantly started with um, whenever that ship was drifting and going towards either the left hand side or the right hand side of that map that I posted a couple of pictures back um, eventually the crew got stuck in ice like the sea around the crew completely got stuck in ice you've seen pictures of modern day ships uh, those that are up and around the Arctic area 
get stuck on ice and then there's there are those sh um, those ice breakers those large massive ships that come to rescue them same concept but again this being in the 1800s there was no other ship that could rescue them at that point no other forms of communication either they didn't have anything involving like wireless communication radio frequency anything like that so when the ship like that would get stuck in the ice it was stuck there was nothing they could do other than to try to break the ice around the ship or to try to do something to get communication back home that they were stuck but when you couldn't do those two things then you were in trouble and that's what it looks like what happened with this tragic crew um, once the ship got hopelessly stuck and time passed on supplies started to dwindle more and more the weather conditions apparently got worse too because uh, there were reports of hypothermia uh, happening within the crew it gave you an idea that they weren't prepared for this particular circumstance um, they weren't prepared to deal with such cold weather it must have caught them completely by surprise and once that happened and the timeline was longer than usual and they started to run out of food they had to leave the ship which actually led to even worse circumstances because now it was either stay on the ship and starve or leave the ship out in the cold and travel by then of course the sea would have been just a sea of ice try to travel and find something land some form of uh, humanity something that could help save them and then that's when the rest of the crew were lost there were also reports of cannibalism potentially occurring within the crew because of bite marks and teeth marks that were found on some of the uh, remaining bones of the crew members by the way yes as I mentioned evidence was found of the crew um, eventually bodies were found that were buried um, it goes to show that at some point um, some of the crew died and others by tradition buried them and then those that were buried they were found later on by search parties um, also the letter that uh, was found by some of the crew members which you see a picture of here it was the one that depicted and told most of the tales surrounding this failed expedition the main captain himself John Franklin was one of the earlier uh, people to die on the crew apparently and so other another person took over for him and they were part of the party responsible of leading the rest of the crew outside of the ship and hoping to find something in terms of humanity something in terms of civilization to help save them but of course that turned mute uh, because eventually they died as well there were also theories that um, most some of the crew may have died from lead poisoning because of the condition that the food was in it was either tinned or some kind of lead uh, that was within the cans that were housing the food uh, was 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 poisoning or something involving the food and that led to more death from the crew members themselves overall tragic tragic experience um, anything involving this expedition again it, it ties into um, tales like the Donner Party or even um, uh, what I was just talking about a couple of videos back anything involving the urban legend tied to that party the um, Dyatlov Pass incident where they had to resort to trying to survive for as long as they could in a short amount of time um, outside in the horrible outside cold conditions same concept but here in this case we're dealing with a party that would have probably had to deal with miles and miles and hundreds of miles of just sea of ice especially if they happen to get, get their ship stuck right in the middle of the sea no hope no hope along those lines um, but still if anyone has more information there's more information by, by means to talk about when it comes to this failed expedition but um, there's, there's too much to cover I just pretty much glanced over and gave a brief synopsis of what had occurred with that party but if anyone has any more detailed relevant information to give you know please it'll be fascinating to see um, anything that stands out especially post it below but again the urban legend itself is tied to this painting one more time 
man proposes god disposes the title of it now should make sense to you where this failed expedition it was a prop it was something where man proposes i shall go forward and find new land find new wealth find whatever in terms of this expedition and then the term god disposes is the reality that happens when you go into something like that and you're completely unprepared uh, for what nature is about to deal to you and your party then you run into something like this where again this painting is the reimagining by Edwin Lancier of what occurred to this failed party but yeah if anyone has any other tales tied to the University of London any other um, experiences tied to that cursed painting that still hangs there to this day it'll be fascinating to hear so alright everybody thanks again as always take care